What's up, toy fiends? How you going? A uh, bit of time's passed. I haven't made a few videos for a little while. So I thought that this time I would do something a bit special. Now, in order to tell this tale and to kind of prep you for the video that's coming up, I have to tell you a bit of a story set in the past, um, back in the time when I was living in Singapore for a couple of years. I ended up going to a Comic-Con uh, one year to go and check out local makers. Mostly I just went for the Transformers <laughs> and uh, some of the other stuff and to see and meet anybody that was there that was making toys. And I happened to come across a stall that was run by an Indonesian guy uh, by the name of Chipta. And he was running a toy label called Good Guys Never Win or GGNW. So we got chatting and talking about toys. Obviously, it was really busy, so we didn't have too much of a chance to catch up. But uh, we had a really good chat about a whole bunch of things. And I'm like, well, you know, I'm, I'm moving back down to Melbourne. I live in Melbourne. And he was like, oh, hey, I'm actually going to move down to Melbourne at some stage. So I was like, cool, man. And I gave him one of my cards. And I said, well, if you ever come down, just, just hit me up. So fast forward a bit of time. And um, I got this uh, random message. Uh, from Chipta saying, hey man, I'm in Melbourne, uh, do you want to catch up? And I'm like, sure. And at the time, I had my studio and everything set up at Versus, uh, Versus Studio and Gallery in Richmond. And he came in and he told me a story like, oh, you know, I kind of lost this card and all this kind of stuff and I'm really glad I found it. And we ended up sharing a studio for quite a while and uh, we embarked on a whole bunch of different adventures together. Uh, we went to Taiwan, we did Taipei Toy Festival together. Unfortunately, we were supposed to do it last year and we were supposed to do it this year, but because of COVID and uh, Fortress Australia, we're not allowed to leave the country, unlike everybody else. So we kind of sent toys up there instead and did all of that. But um, during the course of things, Chipta kind of led the way on uh, doing a whole bunch of toy exhibitions. And we put together these shows called, well, shows and kind of a little crew called this is not a toy scene now the thing is is that since i started making toys living in melbourne i was doing it in complete and absolute isolation i was just sitting in my studio making toys uh trying to learn pretty much everything all on my own this is the days before there was a lot more resources on youtube you know there was no craftsman there weren't like all of this kind of stuff and i was just doing things by trial and error so Chipta knew one or two people in Melbourne or knew of and uh, kind of met up with them and we got a couple of people together and we did the first exhibition in, in Richmond at uh, Ben Frost Gallery, I think it was, which is a part of Versus Gallery. And uh, we had, I think, maybe six or seven people and at the time it was like, fuck, this is so... Oops. I swore. <laughs> and at the time, like, man, this is really exciting. Like... Uh, not only am I able to share a studio with Chipta and, and learn so much from him, um, but then there were other toy makers all of a sudden in Melbourne, people that I, I didn't even know about. And time progressed, people came to the show and, and word started getting out and all these people started coming to us and going, hey man, I make toys, like, you know, can I come and hang out and all that kind of stuff. So we did the first exhibition and then we did, I think, our second exhibition was at B-Side Gallery. And man, B-Side Gallery was totally off the hook. I think there was something like, God, 20, 20 plus artists or something like that. Um, Jules, who also works for GGNW, came down from Indonesia and helped us out with it. And everybody got together and it was, it was just amazing. Um, and then after that, we ended up going up to Sydney and hooking up with a whole bunch of the Sydney toy makers. And we did an exhibition there. Um, we also did a, another show at Versus Gallery, and again, it was it was a, it was another big show. Like there were so many people, and so we formed this little kind of crew called uh, "This Is Not a Toy Scene." Um, this is one of the flyers from uh, one of the exhibitions that Chipta put together, um, and it's something like uh, featuring you know all these artists and stuff. It was it was this is the B side show, um, but. Throughout it, we would have like some workshops and, and people would come and turn up the workshops and go, hey, we always want to learn how to make toys. Like, I, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. And we just kind of like throw it together. So out of that, we ended up also having things called toy jams, which is where 
all of us would just get together and I don't know, we'd have like bits of toys, we'd have casting, we'd have resin, we'd have all that kind of stuff. And we'd catch up kind of infrequently, irregularly, and have what we call toy jams. These were amazing. So this is one of my favorite things to do. A whole bunch of toy makers get together. We have bits and pieces of toys. Everybody just brings random materials and shit. And we make something or we cast something. And at the end of the session, we just have something to show for it, right? So a lot of toys have come out of this. Like this one, well, it's a, it's a bit of a prototype. Like I, I made this. I made this in a toy jam, you know? A lot of the toys that I've done, like really quick, put them together and stuff. It's a community thing. And it, it fits in so well with what I always try to put out there in to share your knowledge, to share what you're doing, um, to talk to people and to really, really grow a community. And like, I have to give my hats off to Chip to, he just makes shit happen. You know, like he, he's such a, an amazing fulcrum for people and he's so energetic and he's so, you know, he, he just helped. If it hadn't have been for him, the Melbourne toy scene wouldn't be as cohesive as it is. I'm a slack shit. Um, I, I do sometimes try to organize things, but you know, I have so much going on in my life, you know, apart from toys that sometimes it's difficult. And he just has this way of bringing all these people out. Um, and everybody else that's come and joined as well, they've all each uniquely and individually added to this thing until now we actually have a scene here. And traditionally, Australia has been really far behind the toy world and much to, you know, its detriment, uh, you know, I don't know what it is about Australia. Um, I don't understand why why designer toys and stuff are not as popular here, but it, it's changing. And it's still kind of forming and getting there and being put together. And I, I couldn't be happier. I have people in a group that I can sit there and talk to now and say, hey, what about this? Or can I try this? Instead of just, you know, <laughs> being in a, in a in a kind of a void, I feel like I have this amazing support. And the toy makers in Melbourne, they come from all different works of life. Yeah, a lot of them come from comics and stuff, but they also come from mental health. Uh, they come from science. They come from uh, like fantasy and comic and sci-fi loving or just the love of the toys. And it's such a unique gathering of these people that have this one thing that kind of binds them together. So we did a toy jam um, about, about two weeks ago. And it was the first time that we'd got together since pre COVID and man, you know, all that shit's happened. And I haven't made a lot of toys in the last year. I've had a lot of shit going on and my creativity has just been so kind of like overwhelmingly slack and bad and shit, which is probably why you haven't seen many videos from me. Uh, I just kind of went into a, a creative dearth I guess and um, was writing a lot but wasn't really creating a hell of a lot and I went to this toy jam two weeks ago and and I caught up with everybody and it's the first time I've seen Chip in like over a year first time I've seen Rachel Renee first well first time I've seen Ko first time I've seen any of these guys in such a long time and it was a smaller group of us maybe seven of us or so and it just it just made me it made me realize what I've missed with making toys and it made me realize how much I love it and that I was being a stupid shit for not sitting in the studio and doing stuff and making videos and doing all of that. I, I can't emphasize how important it is to have like-minded people, not just virtually, but that you can actually literally get together with and have a toy jam. So I had a spur of a moment last minute idea about this. And as I was going out the door, I grabbed my audio recorder and I grabbed the camera and I thought to myself, you know what? This is the first time we've been together. Um, why don't I, why don't I like pull them aside, you know, having a couple of drinks, listening to music, making toys. Why don't I just kind of pull them aside for a little bit, a couple of minutes and just ask them, well, why are these toy jams so important to you? And, uh, it was great. And the results really speak for themselves. So for the rest of the video, I'm going to let my friends do the talking and tell you why toy jams are so important and why 
community and sharing your knowledge is the best thing and one of the most important things that you can have and do as a designer toy maker. Enjoy. Yeah, so um, my name is Rachel Renee. I just opened the space about a month and a half ago. It's been my dream for the last 10 years to build basically a sensory, well, basically I just wanted to build a sensory space for kids because there was a real lack of um, stuff for kids with autism to do. Um, and I did a lot of study to find out that just being in a really controlled sensory environment can really help with behavior and stuff. So it kind of started off with just creating this sensory room um, and then I went and studied um, multisensory therapy over in Korea for a bit and then came back here and realized that it's not a thing here so you need to add something to it and so it kind of made sense um, from my background I come from like a street art background um, and work in disability and have always done workshops and other things like that so I went and studied masters in art therapy and then this has been created. So this is now sensory space, art studio, and I'm also really, really passionate about community arts. So bringing people together to create art in a space. Um, and there's obviously a real lack of that after um, COVID and all of that. So um, the time was now to create this space because I had all these kids that I was working with as an art therapist. I was traveling and they were all just like, I want friends, I want to connect with people, um, I don't know how to do that. And I was like, right, now's the time. So, um, yeah, created this space. So I only had it a month and a half and it's a space for like everybody um, to come and create and add to. Yeah. Leading up to getting this space, before this was my life, because that's all I've been thinking about for the past month and a half, I um, have always dabbled in all different kinds of art forms, always jumping from one thing to another. But toys has been something that's kind of come throughout. Um, so it started off, I started off um, creating toys from that scene back in the day of um, the uh, kid robot times. So I um, just for a while. Um, this is like a kid robot toy. It used to just modify them, paint them um, and change them. So this was a monkey yeah I think it used to be a monkey anyway I turned it into this robotic um, crow guy so this is all I used to do I used to just like get kid robot toys and paint them and it comes from just like being in the street art scene and that was just like a sort of sideline thing that was going on at the time and then um, I started really getting into sculpture so um, just found it really therapeutic to be making um, stuff with polymer clay and so I was just doing that kind of for our little creative outlet on my own. Um, and so polymer clay, I'm just going to, I think this one's a polymer clay, this little guy. Um, yeah, so I was just doing my own polymer clay things. And then I ran into um, Fletcher's first toy show. And Fletch was just like, you should get it back into making toys. And I'm like, I've been making toys the whole entire time. Um, but I have nowhere to show them. It's not a thing anymore. Like I didn't know anyone else was making toys. So um, anyway, I was lucky to be part of the show and then this beautiful community has spawned from it, um, which was a really a massive breath of fresh air as far as Melbourne art scenes are concerned. There's, um, it was just like everybody's really humble and really nice and really willing to share all of their knowledge with each other. So it's been um, really good to be with people that are able to like be so open in sharing their knowledge and um, coming together and creating together because that's what I'm about. I'm all about like 
um, collaborating and community art making. And there's a lot of art scenes in Melbourne which are very insular. People are just like, this is my thing. You know, this is this is the material I use. I'm not going to share my techniques with you. I'm not going to um, – and then and feel, like, offended that, um, that you would ask, like – I just remember being at a show one time and asked somebody um, – what kind of pen, like what pen they use. This is when Little Poskas first came out. And he's just like, I'm not going to tell you what pen I use. Like, that's going to bite you my style. And I'm just like, it's a pen. <laughs> it's a pen. So then, like, I, when I moved to Manchester, I lived in Manchester for a year, and the community over there in street art was super collaborative and beautiful, and everybody was willing to share um, all of that knowledge with each other. And that was something that I really thought was missing in Melbourne which is hence creating space like this. But this toy scene itself is just people that naturally want to share with each other. Um, so it was a really nice way to get back into creating together as a private thing. And then I think that like this space lends itself to the toy making so well because, I mean, I mean, collecting toys is my passion. I mean, I'm a big child, obviously. Look at this space. So, <laughs> so like, um, and because I work with children as well, it's something that, like, both adults and children can kind of get into. We can share our knowledge with my clients, the, um, the wider community, and get people involved. And, like, it was really funny because after we did that show, and I'll be saying to people, like, oh, I said, I'll come to the show. I'm going up to Sydney to do this show. And they're like, toys? Oh, you make toys? I've been making toys. Or I know someone that makes toys. And every single person was just doing it for themselves and not understanding or knowing that other people were out there making toys. So, I mean, the joy of being able to create together um, with you guys has been that my toys have evolved from – just these like little plushies I used to make or little polymer clay items that I used to make to being able to learn how to use resin. Um, and I'm a learning by doing kind of a person. So um, the only way I'm ever going to learn is to sit with people and watch how they do it. And um, Because I'm self-taught with everything, I can't sit and watch YouTube and copy that. <laughs> I need to be involved and hands-on and making this stuff. So I am slowly learning resin. I'm not amazing at it, but it's useful. I'm not somebody that um, wants to make mass produce anything. Like I get, I kind of want to move on with my art all the time. So even with like these little guys, like I make 10, that's it. I'm, not, I'm just not going to make anymore. I'm never going to mass produce. So um I'm still like going to mix all the different materials I use. I use resin for some things. It's really useful. Like um, it was useful like in this little thing because I just made a little face, but then you can get creative and make all of the bodies a little bit different. So um, and then, yeah, and then these guys are just like one-off polymer clay kind of guys. Um, and I kind of like that one-off one -off kind of thing. So it didn't really come from um, – uh, your typical background of what a lot of these toy makers come from, like from like comics and all that. I just really like weird toys. Like my thing is weird toys. <laughs> like the weirder the better. Like this is my favorite at the moment. I'm just gonna show you. Just take a Somebody donated this to the space. Like look at this thing, right? It's like it's a penguin. <laughs> It's a penguin surfing a wave, right? It's got little wheels underneath. <laughs> so, cool. so stupid. <laughs> it's got little wheels and you can go along. It doesn't do anything when you move it. It's just a it's just a penguin inside of I love it. I love it. It's the most useless, ridiculous toy I've ever seen in my life, and I absolutely love it. We're all like these little toy geeks that were here by ourselves, like not thinking that anybody else was doing this. And maybe, you know, that like it does lend itself to the type of people that are a little bit insular in their art making. Um, but, I mean, you could come to a space like this and do workshops and learn. Um, I think learning with other people is the best way to go about it. Um, but I just think whatever you want to do to create, um, whatever you want to create something out of, just, like, just make it. I mean, this is just what I've been doing. I'm just experimenting with different materials, different stuff doesn't matter if it's not a thing or it's not out there yet or whatever. 
I think with toys, you know, I mean, like your techniques are just mashing different toys together. Like, just do that. I mean, this guy, this guy is just like a, a pom pom that you buy at um, Spotlight, and I stuck a face on it. You know, <laughs> so, so there's just so many different ways that you can make toys, and because I'm an art therapist, and um, I can really utilize this kind of toy making as a way um, to express yourself in any way that you want. So like. Even just we make these little um, things I call pocket pets. They're just like a little fluffy bit of material, maybe cut in the shape of a little animal or something like that. And it can just like go in your pocket as a little thing to fiddle with that feels comforting, like at school. Um, yeah, but like, I mean, the great thing about toys is that your imagination can really run, run wild. And I think, um, yeah, just start, um, yeah, just start like doing it. Stop. Yeah, just do it. <laughs>
Um, so I'm AJ. Uh, I go by KO or KO Toys or KO Company, depending on what I'm making. And I make resin toys, like this guy here, Mr. Peacock. I like to make these very, um, like, cubist geometric animals. Well, that's what I've been making lately anyway. Uh, little bear here, influenced by that bear trend during the COVID lockdown. Everyone was putting bears out. I actually, actually did some stencils, and I put some stencils up around the neighbourhood so that the kids would find them, which was quite fun. And that inspired that little toy. And we've got... Some forest animals here, a uh, fox and a bat, and there's an owl as well, but I haven't got an example of that one. So I came to the first show that Chipta and Fletch had at the, what was the gallery in Richmond called? Versus. At the Versus Gallery in Richmond, yeah. I, I don't even remember how, I don't even remember how I found out about that, but I came down with the family and I met you guys, and I was already making toys before that by myself in my garage. I had no idea there was anyone else in Australia doing it. So it was really cool to actually meet some people and be like, oh my God, there's actually people out there that are doing this. Like I just had stuff in my garage. I was selling a few little things online, but so completely isolated. Yeah, they just it just needed someone like you guys to come along and, you know, put on a show and get some people to come and see it to make sure that it was, it was visible for people, that there were other people out there doing it. And there was a few toy artists in that exhibition as well, actually, wasn't there? And then I guess a couple of months after that, we did a big group one at B-Side. Upstairs at B-Side, which was a massive success. Uh, it, was, it was so crowded in there on the opening night, it smelt like Comic-Con in there. It was so crowded. <laughs> and, it was, and it was warm and it was, yeah, it was crazy. It was like a mosh pit in there. It was so successful. And we all, we all did well. We sold pieces. It was really great. And then we did Sydney after that. Um, I'm trying to think. We did another one back at, uh, back at Versus a couple of months after that. Beginning of 2020 that was, wasn't it? Yeah. And then all this happened. Sharing knowledge is a huge part of it because we are all doing it by ourselves in our garage. We're like we're own, all of us are like our own little one-man manufacturing machines, right? And we've all just got our own weird little idiosyncratic ways of figuring out how to do the molding and the mixing and all this kind of stuff. Like even tonight, like, you know, I've taught you some things, you've taught me some things and it's like, oh, that's how you do that thing. And so we're always going to go back and we're going to try it out and delete somewhere. And at the end of the day, we get cooler toys out of it. You know what I mean? Like, Mr. Peacock. Yeah, and also, you know, it's just, it's fun to hang out. I mean, I didn't do, I didn't do that much over COVID. I was just at home. Like, there wasn't that much I could do. Um, I suddenly had a lot more free time, but still everything was still a bit more locked down. You know what I mean? It was kind of this weird in between, and so I was really active during that phase, which was which was good. I want to do more shows, definitely. So um, uh, stuff just seems to come out of nowhere. Like there's a there's a group show on at the old bar on the opening nights in June, end of June, and um, I've got some pieces. I've actually got a couple of these little guys in there in the group show um, with the tree diorama. I've got a, I just sent off a custom piece to, the, to a show in the Philippines like a couple of weeks ago, which was great. It was, it was a weird piece. It was like this, it was like a life-size boombox. It was like this big, yeah. And um, it was kind of stylized. It had like eyebrows and like the speakers were like eyes. So it was kind of cool. And, but like, I don't know what's going on in the Philippines. I've never been there. But like all the artists involved were sharing work. And it was all hip hop influenced stuff, right? And I was like, okay, fuck this. And I just did this full blown black metal <laughs> boombox with like with like the crazy black metal logo painted on the back. You know, did like the you know the black metal makeup on his face with the black on, and it was all black and white. It looks pretty cool. I don't know if anyone in the Philippines is going to enjoy it whatsoever. It's going to stand out so badly, but I thought it was funny, and you know, that's what I'm there for. Like, just do it. Um, you just have to learn. Like you just, you, you do. I mean, there's heaps of stuff online. If you can find people to teach you, like I wish I knew all you guys when I was first learning. But like, it's it is hard to find people to teach you. But even if you have people to teach you, yeah. you just have to go and do it. Like you just have to get the materials, waste the materials, <laughs> build resin everywhere, 
mix the silicon incorrectly and waste it, but that's just how you learn. Yeah, just got to do it. Yeah. But it's 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 rewarding because like the first time you pull out a fully completed resin toy out of a silicon mold is like I, I was hooked immediately. I was like, oh, okay, I guess this is what I do now. been like a lifelong lover of toys ever since I was a kid always loved the toy catalogs all the way through to my adult years um, and I've got a psych psychology background so I've just recently finished my psychology honours um, and throughout the course of my degree I studied over in America for a little while and it was there that I first heard about the application of developmental psychology in media and toys um, so Sesame Street is sort of like the um, you know, typical example of that. So my goal with toys, I guess now, is that I want to do something similar that Sesame Street has done for kids. Um, so apply my psychology, look at the research, um, at what is positive, beneficial for kids in toys, and um, use that research. Uh, so this has been like a dream of mine to be able to use my psychology to inform the creation of toys for a long time. And it wasn't until I met Chipta, who, you know, does, you know, makes toys. Um, yeah, and that's, that's basically it. Yeah, just a like-minded friend. Uh, it was great. I was a little, um, you know, walking into the room of someone who's never done this before. Um, it's not intimidating because everyone's so chill and friendly uh, watching people. But, yeah, when somebody comes along and, like, puts some stuff in your hand, it's just like, you know, chop these up and put them together. And then we can just make a mold. It's... Um, yeah, it's really disarming and I just, I, hours have just gone past. You know, I guess just like seeing a room full of people toys. who are like not just passionate about it, but actually involved creatives, people who have got together to make stuff. Being able to make something at a much like, you know, I've got these big ideas in my head, but being able to make something just like really quickly and have something to show, that's what I want to do.
name's Liam Elkamareki. I make toys under the name ZNG. Um, I'm kind of new to the scene. I've only been making toys for like two years now, I think. It's hard to remember because I started just before uh, COVID hit. And so like, I don't know how long ago that was now, which feels, it feels like forever. But um, yeah, so I'm, I'm new to it. And um, I originally started off doing 3D printed um, figures, but I'm trying to move into making cast resin or hopefully even injection molded stuff. Um, originally, it started when I saw two Indonesian dudes walking down the street with a um, big, big container full of toys on a trolley, and they were going into a 7-Eleven and having slushies and coffee. And I'm like, who the, who the fuck are these two? Are those toys? You know? I saw they just come out of Otre Gallery, and I'm like, what's that about? They put something down, and in it I found the flyer to, this is not a toy scene, uh, this is not a toy scene. Two, I want to say, was at the um, B side, um, and had a look at it and saw who it was, and I'd never heard of anything because, like, um, I was kind of into toys, but not really considered making them sort of for myself or anything like that. And I'd just gone back from spending two years in regional Queensland, which was like a dead zone for creativity or anything. And so I came back to Melbourne, and I saw this flyer, and I looked them up, and saw you guys were going to be at the Melbourne Toy Show. And I met up with you there. I saw you and AJ at your booth, and Chipta was behind his big, his cage, his fortress. Um, and yeah, yeah, just like, like I'll come to the show. So, and I saw that there were the workshops. So I booked for the two days of the workshops of um, toy making. And yeah, I went to that show and like, yeah, did it. And after that, not too long after, Chipta's like, "You're making toys for the next one," and you're like, "Oh." Okay, <laughs> I guess, yeah, 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 so, you know, I'd been make, working on a game with these robot characters, and, like, just, I'm not, I'm not off for, like, working in video games, I don't, it's not my scene, like, it's really hard to find anyone to gel with there, um, but, like, and toys were, like, the thing I loved before games, which was the thing I loved before film, which was something I tried and, and bailed out of, because watching actors act creeps me out. So, you know, back to toys and stuff, and I'll just, like, make your stuff. And I already had this idea for these robots for ages ago, which were my black cactus figures, which are the things I made for This Is Not A Toy Scene 3. And they were all each 3D printed, and that was fun, but 10 hours to print a single figure that I then got to clean up and stuff, and then, like, the more you play with them, the more they fall apart. Now it's, like, got to be a better solution. So that's what... Yeah, well, there was that... You, you weren't there? Were you that... You weren't there on the day I tried to mold with Chipta at the workspace. I think I, I think you came at the end, and oh no, you were upstairs doing D and D or something. And it was it was just a it was just a total disaster because both Chipta because Chipta's quick and dirty, everything's like quick and dirty. And he's trying to do my molds, and they're too thin and stuff, and like my my bits too fiddly and things. And then AJ came around, and he's oh maybe like this, and like, it was just I still have it. It's just a box of just wasted silicon. I generally don't try shit if I think I can fail. Like, it's a really bad habit of mine. Like, I just want to do things. Like, I'd buy resin. I bought resin and silicon and it just sat there. Because, like, I... I mean, granted, I, I'm in, like, a little apartment, so I can't be fucking with stuff without it getting in the carpet. And I can't... You know, it's bad enough doing 3D prints to worry about, like, a resin. Like, I'm using water-soluble resin so that I don't need to use alcohol to, like, clean up my 3D prints. Because otherwise, you know, it's one-third of my apartment. It's just going to be a fume fest sort of thing. So I'm doing that, but like, you know, now that I've got like a space where I'm like, I can mess up, you know, and like, um, so I've got the space with Chipta now and like, it's like, we need to build a box for the 3D printer for like, um, fumes, right? And like, I don't, I don't, I've seen, my mom watches all those renovating shows and I like, I watch them too, like this old house, but like, you know, like, it's just a thing, but he's just like, just get that bit, cut that bit, band saw it, boom, between two Ikea stools. And just nail it together and it's just like so not me but like i just don't i just don't do things i can't do things quick and dirty usually like i like to like spend time but i know it's not the thing that i need to do so i'm trying to be more and like that's why i can't do hand sculpting thing but like hand sculpting thing just terrifies me in a way because like it just won't be right but like you know like i started off only doing like you know like polygon modeling stuff but now I've gotten into digital sculpting, and that's that was really like even then I'm like oh, 
about it, you know, because like I like things to be precise. I like I like the width of a thing to be on a millimeter, on a flat millimeter, not a point. You know, like you know, two point three millimeters wide, like not good enough. Like it's got to be that, you know. And so, like, started doing sculpting that, and so it's kind of opening things up, and like I'm being more mindful now about like width, thickness of things, and the idea that maybe doing some molds, which we tried to do, and I messed it up because I panicked. I left the two um, halves of the mold together too long in the boot of my car, and I couldn't separate them, and I freaked out, and I started like, I'm like, the chips are up, I'm like, I think they're fucked, but he was like, um, on a train, and so he didn't get back to me. Yeah, so I got to see up and he's like, and then he called me up, because he wasn't on it yet, yet or whatever, and he's like, what have you done? And I'm like, I tried to cut them open. And he's like, don't, don't cut them open. I'm like, I'm sorry. And like, they kind of, they kind of work, but like, you know, it's, it's a bit thing. Cause like, I'm trying to get articulated pieces that have like precision, like the body needs to come flat and then the, the holes and it needs to be big enough for the pegs to sit inside. And like, I can't, I can't, I refuse to make something where the legs going to be floppy. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, I can't have it good enough because it's not the thing. Like, yeah. like I don't want to make a staticky thing because, like, that's cool, but that's not the thing I love. I like them to move. And even if you don't play with it, you need to, for me, you need to be able to. And it's a core element of the piece that it does the thing. And if it doesn't do the thing, then I don't want to do it. Just, like, a reminder of the things you don't do that you can. Like... Okay, so like a real bad analogy is like me and food. I'm like a picky eater because I think my parents were just like dumb at that point because I'm the youngest of three and they were just like whatever. And I'm like, I'm dyslexic, so I already had my own problems. You know what I mean? They're like, if he doesn't want to eat tomato, then it's fine. He just does it like we don't care. Like just don't, right? And so like I'm trying to broaden my horizons, right? But it's like if you ask me what I want to eat, I'll pick like the basic thing that I know I eat and then I'll pick the basic thing there. You know what I mean? And I don't ever really try but like so when i go and do things with people like they're like oh what do you want and i just pick something because like otherwise i'm just gonna have fuck it i'm gonna have potatoes and i and i need not to do it but i'm unable my to do it myself and i need you to help me be like maybe you should eat this or something like that during during covid it gave me a lot of time to work on things and i had two directions i wanted to do and one was work on getting my ro- my black cactus robots made in like a more professional sense, um, and I'd also recently fallen head, head like fallen in love with um, Japanese vinyl, and so so those were the two directions. And they're pretty not they're not really the same wheelhouse, but I don't see why I can't play in both these fields, right? So at the same time, I was pursuing trying to get something done in vinyl and something done in the Glyos system, which is the, like the O'Neill designed. We need to talk so that when... <laughs> <laughs> no, this, is, this is the thing, right? I have a big box of original Glyos. Oh, damn. Because oh, like, 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 you see something. like I, I see a Knights of the Slice thing, and I'm like, I like that figure because all the ones I want get sold out right away. Same as like O'Neill or Toy Infinity or uh, God Beast. Yeah, and then you're like, I like that one, but it's going to be a thirty dollars figure, and then it's going to cost sixty on shipping, and I can't do it because they're two different passions, I guess, right? And so I pursued trying to get the glass thing. So I was talking a bit to Jesse Stasio from um, Toy Pizza about like a couple of emails. Like he was nice, he indulged me, and to the point. And I was working on that, but I was also working this movie front, but um, by talking to um, Javier from Stick Up Monsters. And so at the moment, the strangely, the vinyl Sufubi thing is the thing that's most likely to happen. So um, because my 3D sculpting is not good enough, but I'm still good at drawing, I've designed a monster called Grave King, who's like an undead lion kaiju. It's very cool. Yeah. Um, and so I'm working with Javier to get that sculpted, hopefully. That's going to be good. And then I'm work- talking with um, AJ from... I always it's Kyoko, right? Oh, Kyoko. I don't know. It's it's too, it's too long now, and I can't ask. Um, but yeah, and he's helping me because of um, work out a factory in Japan to get it made. And so that's the thing. So the glass thing's kind of like on the side, but that's still something I'm interested in. But we'll see. 
So that's that's kind of where that's at because like I can't I can't do I can't throw two grand into that sculpt and two grand into that sculpt knowing that it's going to be three grand to produce that and three grand to produce that. So I'll do the vinyl things, especially for Australia because I can't be selling. If I'm doing Glyos, I'm selling thirty dollar to forty dollar figures, mostly to American clientele who will not be able to buy a single figure. They'll have to buy four to make it shipping worthwhile. And that's ridiculous. And they're all independently. You sell your own shit yourself. And I can do the same thing with vinyl, but I can sell a one hundred to twenty to two hundred dollar vinyl to someone. Someone will buy that overseas and deal with Australian shipping. And there are places in the world that will stock two or three pieces of a you know vinyl that can cover the cost of the production. So it's strangely that which seems more niche in a lot of ways might be the best process of like being able to survive to make this so yeah that's kind of my and in the meantime i'm trying to make uh 3.75 inch figures based off turkish star wars for someone who's pedantic or like about things like just do it doesn't really even like it's not about that like i just think you need to find find people find people if you can't do it yourself find people and they'll help you figure out you can do it is the thing, you know? How cool is that? So these are the guys that I get to hang out with and talk about toys and make toys and get ideas from and inspiration. And these are just some of them. There's a whole bunch of other people that weren't able to make it to this toy jam. And I just have to say thanks to all those guys for all of their words and all of their inspiring shit. Uh, it absolutely and completely inspires me. So I hope that in some way... Uh, their stories and their thoughts have also helped to inspire you and that you should really get out and make some friends in your local community. Um, you know, no matter what city you're in, there's going to be some people that are making toys. Find out who they are. Go and hang out. Make toys. Don't do everything virtual. And I know that that's hard in this post-pre-during <laughs> COVID world or wherever we are at the moment. Um, but... It's really essential that you do this face-to-face -face time and you sit down and create these things with people and find that common love. You're going to learn a lot and you're going to grow from it and it's going to make you such a better toy maker. I know that all of these guys have really, really helped me um, become a, a better creator in general uh, just purely from being creators themselves. So... I really hope that you've enjoyed this kind of different, uh, not even tutorial, but slightly interviews. I might do some one-on-one -on -one interviews with some of these guys and a few more people so that you can get an idea as to what the toy scene like is down here in Melbourne. Uh, that actually sounds like a pretty fun thing to me. And I just really hope that their stories and ways in which they work and the reasons that they do these things has helped to inspire you as well. So I'll leave it there for now and uh, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you've enjoyed any of this and uh, go and get fucking vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Get vaccinated. Don't be one of those crazy fucking anti-vax shits. And if you are, unsubscribe from my channel. I don't really care about you. Because you're not making the world a better place. Vaccination is key. But besides that, uh, yeah, subscribe. <laughs> and uh, look, I really hope that you've enjoyed this one. And I will try to do more videos more often for you. Uh, now that I'm back in the studio and I've got a bit of time, I can make some more videos. Because I'm really looking forward to getting back into making a whole bunch of new toys. Take it easy, toy fiends. Till next time.
Okay, okay, okay. If you have a toy jam, then there's one essential thing, apart from your friends, pieces of toys, materials and that, that you're going to need to have, and you're going to need to have a few drinks. This is uh, my latest chrysanthemum muckily that I make myself. It is my favorite drink. Um, this one turned out really good, and it's just so... Mm. It's always delicious. It's always delicious. Maybe someday I'll make a video about how to make muckley. That'd be interesting. But for now, drink and make toys. Or if you don't drink, just have some soft drink or something that's really cool for you. No pressure. It's all cool. You don't have to drink alcohol. But if you do, just drink responsibly. Cheers. Rishi, do you want to do this? What are you doing? I'm looking for nuts. Do you have oh, any what? nuts? I'm looking for nuts. What you don't have any nuts? Wait, Winter's what kind coming. of nuts are you looking for? Have you lost your nuts? Nuts and bolts. Are you or looking, did are you, you not have any nuts in the first are place? Are you looking for some A's, B's, or D's nuts? Are you sure? You want some D's nuts? <laughs> <laughs> what about D's nuts? Rach, he's after some of D's nuts. He's after the D's nuts. <laughs>